Hello friends and welcome to the Architecture Enthusiast and to the Crystal Palace designed by Joseph Paxton in 1832 in London, England. Designed by Joseph Paxton, the Great Exhibition Building was 1,851 feet long with an interior height of 128 feet. It was three times the size of St. Paul's Cathedral. The introduction of the sheet glass method in Britain by the Chance Brothers in 1832 made possible the production of large sheets of cheap but strong glass, and its use in the Crystal Palace created a structure with the greatest area of glass ever seen in a building. It astonished visitors with its clear walls and ceilings that did not require interior lights. Paxton's modular hierarchical design reflected his practical brilliance as a designer and problem solver. It incorporated many breakthroughs, offered practical advantages that no conventional building could match, and above all embodied the spirit of British innovation and industrial might that the Great Exhibition was intended to celebrate. The geometry of the Crystal Palace was a classic example of the concept of form following manufacturer's limitations. The shape and size of the whole building was directly based around the size of the panes of glass. These were the largest available at the time, measuring 10 inches wide by 49 inches long. Because the entire building was scaled around those dimensions, it meant that nearly the whole outer surface could be glazed using millions of identical panes, thereby drastically reducing both their production cost and the time needed to install them. The original Hyde Park building was essentially a vast, flat-roofed rectangular hall. A huge open gallery ran along the main axis, with wings extending down either side. The main exhibition space was two stories high, with the upper floor stepped in from the boundary. Most of the building had a flat profile roof, except for the central transept, which was covered by a 72 foot wide barrel vaulted roof that stood 168 feet high at the top of the arch. Both the flat profile sections and the arch transept roof were constructed using the key element of Paxton's design, his patented ridge and furrow roofing system. The basic roofing unit in essence took the form of a long triangular prism, which made it both extremely light and very strong and meant it could be built with the minimum amount of materials.